I got called up one day and said, we're cleaning out a house. We got to get it cleaned out today. Come over. And I was like, okay. Was like, this was it what you found when you got there? Well, they were they were dumping them. I was like, well, let me look oh through them. Let me look. God, let me look see what's there. Oh, and, my um, God. It was, it was a that, lot of crap. Was it, it was in that disarray like that? Well, they were dumping them in there. They were cleaning out oh. the house. It was all crap? It was mostly crap. You didn't I mean, find anything most, good at all? I found out of there about 100 good records. 100 decent. good records? That's pretty yeah. good. That ain't bad. No, decent stuff. Nothing real. I was hoping to find something really exciting. You got I your magnifying glass? Stuff. i got to see what labels these are. <laughs> yeah, There's some zoom diamond in. discs. There's zoom a... in. Let's see. You can zoom in and you can go like this. Uh. Well, I see some old, what look like old labels. Oh, there are. There's definitely some... There's it was a lot Victors. of classical, uh, I see, those yeah. 30s, 40s classical right. binder there's a, there's sets. There's an Edison. Yeah. Some album sets. Yeah. There's some broken records. There's a broken Jeanette Electro Beam. <laughs> there's a black swan, I mean a, a yeah. black patty right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a couple of Paramounts. Mm -hmm. Robert Johnson's uh, right. cool. Robert Johnson there. vocalions. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I've been there, been there. <laughs> I couldn't take them all. I can't begin to tell you how many millions of 78s I've looked through. I've spent hours and hours plowing through warehouse full of boxes of 78s and, and attics and right. garages and basements and <laughs> Tell me uh, a good story about. Uh, I mean, you're, you. Uh, I'm so jealous of like you know. I love your stories that I've heard of just the way you used to go house to house and I find did. records. Tell me a good story about finding records in the early days. In Delaware, when I first started, I read this book called Jazz Man. They had a chapter in this book written in 1939 called Hot Collecting, and they talked about guys going door to door in black neighborhoods looking for 78s, knocking on doors. I thought, oh, I guess I'll try that. <laughs> As shy as I was then, I was a very shy kid, I had the boldness to do that. Went to the black section of Dover, Delaware, where I lived, and, you know, it was, on the, it was literally on the other side of the tracks. It was, you know, segregated, and I was the only white person there. But, you know, it was old-time days. You know, nobody bothered me. Nobody threatened me or menaced me, and people were actually quite nice in that section. And, and uh, I went knocking on doors. And I got to be known as the old record man. Here come the old record man. <laughs> the old record man, you were what, about 20? No, no, I was like 17, 18. Yeah, the old record man. <laughs> Here come the old record man. And there was a, uh, you know, you go in these people's houses and there's, a, there's the wind-up Victrol, one of those big stand-up things, sitting in the middle of the living room still in these, in these old unpainted wooden houses with a, uh, you know, look on the turntable, there's a 20s blues record there on the turntable, usually really beat up. I said, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, stuff like that. And they would sell them to, to me, dime a piece, 10 cents a piece. I didn't have much money, I never had more than a couple bucks to my name at that time, so I couldn't offer them much. But there was that one, that one lady, and she had this record I really wanted, and she just wouldn't sell it, you know. I offered her 25 cents, she said, I know that record's worth more than that. You, you think you can fool me because I'm just an old, ignorant, colored woman, but you know, no white boy is going to put one over on me, and you know, I know it's worth more than that. So I offered her 50 cents. No, no. So I went home. I gave up, and it haunted me so much that I said, oh, I'd go back there and offer her more. I went back, offered her a dollar. No, no, I know that record's worth more than that. <laughs> I think I got up to $2, but then that was it. I couldn't get paid. Offer any more than that, she wouldn't sell it. What record was that? It was Goofus by Slim the Mars Southerners on Victor. Should we play that? I got it uh, 40 years later, 30 years later. I got a copy finally. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't let it go. <laughs> no, and you know. I know that feeling. Nobody knew what it was. I asked a lot of collectors at that time. Nobody ever heard of a Goof, Slim Lamar. Well, who's the, who are they? You heard it because she played it for you. No, she didn't play. She well, then where did you know of it before that? It, I, I just looked really promising. Looked it was on late twenties Victor label, and I said, "Wow, that's got to be a good record." <laughs> Goofus by Slim Lamar Southerners, unknown in the collecting circles I knew. Right. I knew some guys that were at 
in Ohio at Kent State that were that were jazz collectors, and they'd never heard of it. I was you know in correspondence with them, so uh, it was very, that was very frustrating. Finally, yeah, some, sometime in the 1990s, I finally got a copy of it, and so it happens John has it here. <laughs> All right, John has a copy, so well, let's listen to it. Do you remember the woman's name? No. I don't think she even told me her name. <laughs> she lived in a in a unpainted wooden house with no electricity. Just like a, a oil lamp on the kitchen table. You didn't need electricity to play records in them days. Well, she had a crank up <laughs> machines, right? That was all she needed. And if she didn't have any steel needles, you can always cut your toenail off and just use that. <laughs> yeah, probably a sewing needle probably work, huh? Whatever you got.